Hi guys, in this video we're going to look at methods of reproduction. Uh, we're going to talk about what reproduction is and what constitutes reproductive success. We're then going to talk about the two methods of reproduction, asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. And then we're going to look at some of the forms of asexual reproduction including binary fission, budding, fragmentation and parthenogenesis. Uh, so reproduction is what ensures the continuity of life or the continuity of a species on a smaller level and it's a process which a parent is able to uh, produce an offspring and therefore uh, continue the species. Uh, this process is deemed a success if a parent can produce an offspring and that offspring can uh, survive until sexual maturity to reproduce and create another offspring. Uh, so this sort of chain is what continues life uh, and uh, mostly in the case of sexual reproduction can lead to uh, evolution uh, or the, that life actually changing forms. Uh, so we'll firstly look at asexual reproduction. Now asexual reproduction occurs uh, when one parent reproduces to form an offspring and that offspring is an identical copy as, or a clone. So they have the exact same DNA as the parent. Now there are a few different methods of asexual reproduction uh, including binary fission, budding, fragmentation and parthenogenesis which we'll look at now. So the most simple form of asexual reproduction is binary fission. Uh, in this case, one organism replicates its DNA and then splits into two identical halves. Uh, and an example of this is bacteria. Um, so the bacteria gets to a certain size uh, and then signals that uh, it's going to undergo reproduction and then it splits. Uh, so this is a similar process to mitosis that you might have learnt about. And this form of asexual reproduction can be very, very effective when the conditions are stable. So when you have the right temperature, the right amount of nutrients, the right amount of sunlight, um, this uh, binary fission can cause many, many um, organisms to be produced. Uh, so if you've got a bacteria that reproduces every six to eight hours, uh, over the course of a week, you're going to see exponential growth of this bacteria. Uh, the problem comes when we move outside of these ideal conditions uh, because there isn't any variation within the species. Another form of asexual reproduction is budding. Budding occurs when a smaller offspring grows off the body of the parent, the larger offspring, uh, until it's ready to break away uh, and that then results in a smaller offspring. So this can happen uh, in simple organisms like yeast um, or hydra which is a, a form of aquatic animal uh, but can also happen in plants such as the cactus. Fragmentation is when a part of the parent is broken off, so resulting in a smaller chunk, I suppose, uh, of that parent, which can then grow another organism from that chunk and produce offspring. So this would be like somebody cutting off your arm and a whole new body growing from that arm, um, plus you growing your arm back. Uh, this can occur in animals such as starfish, as well as in plants such as taking a cutting. And we don't often think of this as asexual reproduction uh, with plants, but you can actually, um, with some plants, uh, take a cutting and then grow that and it will actually produce roots and create a whole other organism. Plants are pretty cool in the way that they go through asexual reproduction. They've got a lot of different and sophisticated ways of doing this asexual reproduction and this includes things like runners so uh, kaikuya grass for example will send out runners that are above the ground uh, and these runners can then um, will spread that organism but if they're cut off have their own root structure to create another organism. Um, bulbs so for garlic for example so when you get a, a bulb of garlic each of those little cloves uh, if the process kept on growing would actually turn into another garlic plant and then could be replanted to create another bulb in itself. Uh, rhizomes which are root systems below the ground um, so sending out um, similar to runners uh, but it's roots below the ground that can then um, pop up and 
produce their own organisms when separated from the main one. And tubers such as potatoes, which are similar to rhizomes, uh, well, somewhere between rhizomes and bulbs, really, um, in that they are a part of the root that is thickened uh, and can actually send off uh, extra uh, shoots from that, creating more organisms. Another cool example of asexual reproduction is parthenogenesis. Now, this is a special form of asexual reproduction where an egg so the, the female gamete, uh, can develop without being fertilized by the male gamete. So this occurs in organisms where they can be fertilized. Um, so some organisms can go through that sexual reproduction, or if not fertilized, they will actually produce an offspring themselves. Um, so for example, whiptail lizards, so if there aren't any males around in a uh, an area, the female can go through parthenogenesis and create... Um, identical copies from her eggs, uh, as well as in bees. So when the um, queen bee's eggs, uh, or queen bee lays eggs, if those eggs are fertilized, they become worker bees, but if they're not fertilized, they become drones. Um, so this is that asexual reproduction. So sexual reproduction, and I hinted on it before, but sexual reproduction involves two parents, and each of those parents produce a haploid gamete, remembering that a gamete is a sex cell, and haploid means that they have half the number of chromosomes of a full organism. Um, so this process of meiosis uh, produces these gametes. So you get the, um, these gametes from two different parents, uh, and when they come together, they form a zygote. Um, so that's a fertilized egg, for example, and that zygote is diploid. So it's got half the DNA from the mother, half the DNA from the father, um, and that then forms the zygote. Now, the good thing about sexual reproduction is that because there's some DNA from the mother, some DNA from the father, the offspring are genetically different to their parents. So this allows for genetic variation within a species, which can be very important, as I said earlier, when the uh, abiotic conditions change. Uh, so if the temperature is heating up, or any abiotic conditions really, um, this uh, variation within the species can be beneficial. Uh, now humans uh, undergo sexual reproduction, uh, as we should know, and that's an example of internal fertilization, where the egg is fertilized inside the uh, well, well the egg with the is fertilized with the sperm inside the female um, but sexual reproduction also includes external fertilization such as coral spawn um, so the male coral release the sperm and the female coral release the eggs into the water um, and that the uh, sperm and eggs meet each other in the water. Now, external fertilization usually requires um, an aquatic environment uh, for this to occur. Another example is in flowering plants or angiosperms with pollination. Uh, so the pollen, uh, being the male gamete, uh, gets from the anther of the plant, uh, gets onto the stigma of the female, or the female part of the plant, and that uh, then travels down the pollen tube to uh, pollinate the ovum. In this video, we've talked about reproduction being the process by which an organism makes copies of itself and reproductive success in that those copies can reach sexual maturity to uh, reproduce themselves. We've talked about asexual reproduction, uh, where there is only one parent, including binary fission, where one splits into two identical uh, organisms budding where one grows off the uh, the offspring grow off the parent organism until they're ready to drop off and form their own uh, organism that is smaller fragmentation where the parent is broken uh, but that broken piece can grow into a whole new organism and parthenogenesis where an organism if not um, if the egg isn't fertilized can still go on to uh, produce an offspring and we've talked about Sexual reproduction, where there are two parents, therefore uh, genetic diversity occurs. And uh, the different types of sexual reproduction, including internal fertilization, external fertilization, and pollination in angiosperms. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace out.